God's people and responsible for their covering and their growth here on earth. One of the greatest challenges is how do you keep the people of God focused on the main thing? You know, the main thing ought to remain the main thing. We live in a world today where basically people want what they see. There's a satisfaction of the soul that the world offers. You know, you're going to get the house you want, the career you want, uh, the spouse you want, the children you want. At least that tends to be the goal. And so mankind are very temporal. They've got to feel it. They've got to have it. Well, as Christians, the main thing really is that we understand that we are here on earth as pilgrims traveling through and that our final destination is heaven. And so the main thing, the main goal that I have as a pastor is keep God's people focused on the end as a Barclayite. Our motto, SPK Finam, keep the end in view, is very much the desire and the heart of myself, and I believe the heart of God. In this world, you're going to get distracted by so many things and attracted to so many things. Yet, we cannot rest here. We cannot remain here. We will not remain here. The Bible certainly points to, and you and I both know, that. Death is an appointment, and except the good Lord Jesus return via the rapture, that all of us will keep that appointment. <laughs> it's one appointment we'll, we'll have to keep. And so therefore, my goal continues to be, let's focus on eternity, the timeless time. Uh, let's not focus on that which will pass and go away. But let's focus on that which shall remain forever. And it was in this heart set, this mindset, that I was excited to have Superintendent Janice Batchesby approach me in the suggestion of teaching on the book of Revelation. I do recall in my teen years, under my former leadership, being very intrigued and captivated indeed when he spoke on the end times in the book of Revelation. Well, decades and decades later, here I am taking a fresh look, fresh insight, and fresh understanding on this very book. I do believe that 30 years later or so, that it is more important for the Christian to understand that we are living in the last days. In other words, there's not much left on the calendar that has to take place before Jesus Christ gets the orders from his Father to go and receive those out of the world who have lived according to his word and trusted him as Lord and Savior unto himself. With this in mind, the book of Revelation, a book that many fear, stay away from, cannot understand, seek not to understand it, well, gee, we could go to heaven without reading the book of Revelation. This is true. Yet, we cannot be effective witnesses in the year 2019 and beyond unless we understand that what we are experiencing in our local Bermuda and beyond the shores of Bermuda, what the world is experiencing has been spoken of in God's holy word. And so with that in heart and in mind, I fully embrace this Thursday night class, Escaping the Coming Night. My goodness, we want to escape the coming night. That's why we Christians must be sold to end light and we must work while it is day. For that nighttime is coming when no man can work. And so you're going to get an opportunity now to listen to some of the class members, what they received, what they thought of concerning this class. And it's to encourage you as we intend to in January 2020, God willing, to begin this class again for our entire congregation. Whether you're a member of Shekinah Worship Center or not, you're certainly invited with 
permission from your pastor or not having a church service on your church night to join us. We welcome you. We've had about three to five persons do so during this class. And so stay tuned now and enjoy these testimonials. And I'll be back afterwards to share uh, some of my most wow, vivid wow moments uh, that we received during these sessions. Enjoy. The Escape the Coming Night class has truly been a life-changing experience. I am definitely not the same Christian woman I was a year ago when the class began. I now have a better understanding and appreciation of my Christian journey. This earthly journey, whilst temporary and finite, nevertheless will impact my eternity. I cannot just be a good person in the here and now and just do my best. I must do what is expected, what God expects of me. The letters to the seven churches whilst written 2,000 years ago, have messages that are even more relevant and pertinent today because we are that much closer to Jesus' return. The letters give clear warnings and instructions to the body of Christ, the church. We must pay attention and be obedient and stand firm on the truth of God's word. We must not compromise, dilute, or pervert the word of God, or else we will miss the rapture. The ETCN class has also revealed to me that as a Christian, I have an obligation, a responsibility, to win souls to the kingdom. I want to spare my friends and family from the tribulation and an eternity in hell. I want them to also have the promise of eternity in the presence of God. And so I must live a holy life. I must be the light and the salt. I must set the example. I must be unafraid to speak the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth of God and his word. Escape the coming night has indeed been a revelation. I more clearly hear God, feel the presence of his Holy Spirit, and I know that Jesus is real and is the key to my salvation. This class can do that for you too. I was very hesitant on joining this class. I didn't want to learn about the end of existence. I knew it was happening, I know it's inevitable, and that was enough for me. There's nothing I can do about it, so that's that. To be honest, the only reason I did join is because Aunt Janice constantly encouraged me and offered to pay for my books. Thank you. <laughs> During the first few weeks, I'd be there just because I knew I needed to be, and I'd leave with either a headache or with heart pounding anxiety, and I couldn't get out quick enough. It was a struggle for me to be there each week, especially considering pretty much everyone in the class was so excited every week, and I was not. I wondered what was wrong with me and why I didn't feel the way the others do. I talked to Aunt Janice, and she assured me that it was okay to not be excited like everyone else, and it was okay to feel how I felt. The main point was that I was there and that I was learning. That couldn't be more true. To be honest, it still doesn't excite me, but I understand that's because I can't fully comprehend the absolute perfection that is to come in heaven, nor can I grasp the concept of forever. That's just me. 
but I will say that the knowledge and understanding that I've gained has been like no other. I'm no longer afraid or anxious when I hear or read about prophecies being fulfilled these days. I would encourage anyone to come out and to take these classes, even if it's just for the understanding alone. And even if you feel fear, do it afraid. Good evening, my name is Carolyn Dallas. The book of Revelation, the book of prophecy, the book of Jesus Christ, the revelation of Jesus Christ, so much to take in. I read the book of Revelation a few times. Did I understand it? No. It has sure been an amazing journey through each verse, the many aha moments, kept me excited and motivated, wanting to know more. Revelation 1.3 says, Blessed is he that read it, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. As we learned about the churches and the letters that were written to each, I had to examine myself and ask myself, does any of what was written to the churches in any way apply to me? As I look around the world and this island of Bermuda and see the things that are going on, I must remain steadfast, follow the word, believe the word. I must continue to be a witness for Christ. As Hebrews 12, 14 says, strive for peace with everyone and for the holiness without which no one will see the Lord. I look forward to seeing my Savior face to face. I look forward to no more tears, no more pain, no more suffering. I try my best to be the best every day. My testimony for the revelation of Jesus Christ escaped the coming night classes. Well, let me begin by saying that the first time I read the book of Revelation, I read up to the third chapter and got scared. I mean, with the lack of understanding that I had and what I had read about the persecution of the seven churches, of what they went through, I just didn't want to read any further. Honestly, I thought that the rest of the book was going to be more of the same. I couldn't be more wrong. But now that I am rereading it and studying it with more understanding, I am diving into it more with increased vigor, excitement, and expectation. I used to watch TV shows and movies about supernatural powers and witchcraft. But ever since I started this revelation study, those type of TV shows and movies are like a play to me. I am not interested anymore. I also am into world history. And this revelation study has allowed me to do what I like to do the most, dig into the history of foreign lands and finding out more about the churches and the background, how they came into existence. That, that got me very excited. I must say that the more I find out about the history of these places, the more I want to know more and more excited I got. I tend to stay away from the TV shows that delve into the supernatural and witchcraft. I just don't watch them no matter how curious I get. Now that I have more of an understanding as to what it's all about, and where it originates from and how certain things happen and why we are as we are today. I have also noticed that I pray more and understand the book more. And I tend to look at things, worldly situations from a spiritual outlook, from a spiritual perspective, which has given me more calmness, endurance, to deal with more and disciple more. It is slow going, 
but it's a process. And I have been criticized more, mocked more, and put down more because of my faith. But that's okay because I know where I'm going. This is not my final destination. Another thing I have noticed about myself is that I am reading my Bible more and doing more reading on spiritual warfare, which is becoming more and more prevalent. Also, that I have been listening to the Revelation lessons again, and in Lesson 14, it was mentioned that after the sixth seal, the sixth trumpet, and the sixth vial, there is a pause. I'm not sure how long the pause is, but it brought to my memory the fact that between the Israelites going to Egypt and Moses delivering them out of Egypt, there was the pause of 430 years. And between Malachi 4.6 and in the, of the Old Testament and the birth of Jesus in Matthew of the New Testament, there is a pause of 400 years. I don't know about you all, but that means something to me. Coincidence? I do not think so. I can hardly wait for my heavenly body. Thank you. My testimony, um, Escape the Coming Night. A year ago, I started Escape the Coming Night lessons every Thursday night. I was so eager and determined to come to these lessons because I wanted to understand and have the knowledge of the revelations. Many years ago, I started to read Revelations, and I was reading, I didn't understand it. It was very frightful of what the Bible verses were saying. Give an example. The Bible talked about his feet, his head, hair, and his eyes. Just to mention a few, the life of me, it was very confusing. I remember reading about the time how John saw racing out of the sea a creature with seven heads, ten horns. That's when I closed my Bible, never went back to read Revelations. Dr. David Jeremiah's lesson has been such a blessing, and yes, very overwhelming, not saying that it was too much, but it was a good feeling. Now I can freely open my Bible and read Revelations and feel comfortable and not confused and frightened, but read with a good understanding. My thanks to God for Pastor Maria Seaman and Superintendent Janice Battersby for their obedience and their time on all the amazing illustrations shared to us that help me with knowledge and understanding of the revelations. Hello, oh. my name is Angela Young and I have recently um, joined SWIM and I'm excited to have partaken in this class, Escape the Coming Night. I know it sounds corny and it may seem like you know, everyone says that, but it truly has been a life-changing experience. For those of you who follow me on Facebook, you know I'm very outspoken and I'm very, you know, I just say like it is. But I'm thankful for this class because it helped me to understand Revelation. Uh, for those of you who want to understand how do you correlate between what's being said in the Bible and also what's happening in the world events, this class will give you such insight it would challenge not even uh, what you understand politically, historically, but also understanding that God had prophesied this over 2,000 years ago. And to see basically all people are concerned about the, the wars, the rumors of wars, and the gay lifestyle agenda, and what's happening in the, in the schools, and what's happening in the homes, and children are so disobedient. I mean, go through the whole litany of things happening right now. But it's all been prophesied in the Bible. And when you study Revelation, you have to go beyond just the seven churches. And I'm so thankful for Dr. David Jeremiah, and particularly Superintendent Janice Battersby and Pastor Maria Seaman for making this such an easy understand, very applicable. It has challenged me as a Christian. Uh, those of you, again, who see my posts, it's also helped me to understand that while, and I'll just say this, while others may say they understand the word, but really comes down to, but do you really understand? And do you really understand what God was saying? Because if you did, then you would have the boldness 
to speak what thus says the Lord because it would challenge your understanding. It will come alive for you. So I encourage, I implore all of you to come out. The next session starts in 2020. You do not want to miss it. You want to be a part of this. There is so much happening in the world today and you want to understand why. But again, don't panic. Look up. Your redemption is nigh. Thank you. Escape the coming night. To say that this class has been a life-changing class is an understatement. When the classes were offered by Superintendent Battersby, I decided to attend. However, admittedly, I was intimidated. After all, it is the book of Revelation. I remember the first class, seeing other classmates, which also included non-Shekinah members, who were excited and open to learning as well. Everyone on board and one accord. Opening the book and going to the introduction and getting excited at the introduction. And even more, more exciting anticipation from week to week of what we were going to be taught. As the classes went on and the teaching was becoming more intense, we went further into the book. I became less and less fearful and became more and more aware. More aware of how much God loves us that he sent his son Jesus as our eternal escape so that we can spend time in eternity and escape that coming night. That prior to Earth's horrendous destruction and ultimately getting rid of sin forever, that Jesus will come back for each and every one of his children to be with him forever in glory. More aware that it is up to us, up to me, to understand this book and not fear it, but to embrace it. More aware of what's going on on the world stage and better understanding of the times. More aware that time is short and we have much to do. More aware that we are not to sweat the small stuff. This class has been educational. It has also been enlightening. And the teaching of us through each and every chapter and verse of Revelation has also bonded us in Holy Ghost experiences and we have become more like a family. Mm -hmm. I am grateful to have started and finished the class. I am very thankful for the dedication of Dr. David Jeremiah for the Escape the Coming Night series and his clear teaching. I am grateful and thankful for Pastor Maria Seaman for giving approval for this class. I am grateful for Superintendent Battersby for her tireless and awesome work, obedience and unwavering dedication for this class. I am grateful that our praise and worship is being elevated through this class as we have drawn closer to God and his purpose. I am grateful for so much and I am grateful that hashtag we win. Escape the coming night, the revelation of Jesus Christ. This is a misunderstood book. I, like many others, did not understand the book of Revelation, although I had read it many a times. I could not understand the book of prophecy. There are parts in there when I would read it, it would frighten me. But now, having been taught the importance of the book that has been written by Dr. David Jeremiah, my eyes have been opened wide. And may God bless and keep Dr. Jeremiah. I look forward to the ETCN class on Thursday nights where we get down to the sincere meat of the word. Now that my eyes, my mind, my heart, my soul has been open to many things that is happening around the world today. We see the Lord's appearing soon. And I am encouraged to hold on to God's unchanging hand like never before. To worship him as if it's my last day on earth. Many scoff at the saying that Jesus is coming. We heard that as little children when we were growing up. Looking around and seeing what's happening around the world, wars, 
rumors of wars, earthquakes in diverse places, floods, and the like. This book tells of his coming and what shall happen during the tribulation period. The rapture, when the bridegroom will come to take his bride away to be with him for eternity. Around chapters 3 and 4, the church and the spirit is removed from the earth and there will be nothing but chaos here. I don't want to be here. Jesus is waiting on us. He says that the cup of iniquity is not yet full. Now this Christmas, ETCM, when we sing joy to the world, we will under, we will turn it up. Yes, because we know that his glory hasn't come yet. But anyhow, everyone's heart is not prepared to me. But until he comes, we are to walk submissively, witness urgently, work fervently, watch expectantly, and worship him. About studying Revelation, the first night I just came to drop off and come back to pick up. But I was encouraged to stay, so I started from the first class. Before these classes, whatever I heard about Revelation was nightmarish to me. It was really scary. I did not want to hear about all that. But being in the classes, I have been taught about Revelation from chapter one, where the different churches were told about themselves, to the tribulation, to the judgments that will take place. It has taught me to be aware of the signs of the times and to keep focused on glorifying God. I am not afraid now because I want to go to heaven to experience the beauty of my home in heaven. The pearly gates, the streets of gold, and how the glory of God just shines through. What I got out of this class is that there is nothing to fear, but I have gained the courage to go out and witness to those that don't believe. I have gotten a clearer revelation of revelation. And I pray that you that haven't accepted Christ will do so, so you will experience heaven and a life of perfection. Escape the coming night. Become an official escapee. Escape the coming night. Have you ever read a book, but because of the nature of the book, you were afraid? One day you decide to read it anyway. This was me. Revelation teaching was offered and I thought, let me take the class and see what it will be like. The beginning of the book was better than I originally remembered. The first thing I realized that many people refer to the book of John's revelation. However, the book is really the revelation of Jesus Christ. As the story unfolds, it's written to the churches. This allows me to know that God wants the church to receive the rewards that he has for us. I do understand now why I never got beyond chapter 3. The book is first, like its name, Revelation. It reveals the divine truth. And this book reveals to us as humans the truth by God. This time we live in a time and many preachers are preaching the word of God to us as people of what will come. However, if we do not adhere to the word, the destruction, the persecution, and rejection that we will suffer cannot be compared to what we will experience on the earth now. The better part of this book for me is the blessings that will come to the child of God. 
We will walk on the streets of gold. We will see the gates of pearl and be able to worship the King of Kings forever. So if you want to enjoy this, come 2020. Make it a new year for you and start afresh. Mm. So in finality for me, the study of this book of Revelation is allowing me to know that I have to take what is being issued out now because in the end, we will. I accepted the invitation to study the book of Revelation in the format of ETCN, Escape the Common Night, by Dr. David Jeremiah. From the beginning, signs and symptoms were given and a diagnosis formed as to what church I belong to, my choice being the faithful church. I found the book confusing, frightening, intriguing, and thought-provoking, you know? I questioned, am I really ready for heaven? Am I going to be rewarded, and for what? I've done nothing or not enough in preparation for this. The tribulation really bothered me. Such a horrible time and sequence of events. My heart bled for those left behind, my family, my friends. Hell is real. I must witness to them. I must live every day heaven bond. I must worship God. Songs that were just sang through the years became so real. All oh, hail the power of Jesus' name and crown him Lord of Lords. Behold, he comes riding on a cloud, shining like the sun. Hallelujah, salvation and glory, honor and power unto the Lord our God. I remember years back asking, what is heaven like? We got a glimpse, the tree of life. Escape the coming night. I just enjoyed the book of Revelation. I never read it because I was too scared to read it. But I enjoyed it. Thank God for superintendent and pastor and Dr. Jeremiah. I have, I've gotten stronger, so stronger. I'm not afraid to stand up to talk to people like I used to be so timid. But I've gotten bolder now and I just love people. I love to pray for people. And God has given me a desire to serve him. I just love him. Like I used to be like really timid, but now I'm not timid. But I thank God for the book of Revelation. Thank God for everyone. Be win. To me, the book of Revelation wasn't an easy book. I've known it to be a book of gloom and doom. However, since attending the Escape the Coming Night class, it has become a book of love for God's people. The class has allowed me to draw even closer to God as a Christian. I now know that there is more required than ever before if I am to make heaven my home. It is now my duty to ensure that those around me not just make it into heaven, but be a part of God's army. Even though I am still learning about Revelation, I am not where I used to be before the Escape the Common Night classes. Yes, the book of Revelation can seem like gloom and doom, but keep reading and studying because in the end, we win. This study that we have done, Escape the Coming Night, has been such a blessing to me over the last year. We have grown together as a family. We've laughed, we've cried, we felt joy and praise and the heaviness for the future of the earth to come, along with those who don't truly accept Christ as their savior. But if you ask me what my most treasured moment about this study is seeing my fellow believers go from being scared and unsure about the book of Revelation to having a love and understanding about it. I've been studying this book for many years, even before I became a Christian, and I could never understand why Christians never took time to study and learn it. I now have a greater understanding as to why Satan doesn't want believers to read this book. 
Revelation reverses the humiliation of Christ seen in the rest of the New Testament and reveals him in all of his glory as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We see him assume his rightful place as ruler over the whole earth. Like I said before, I had been reading and studying Revelation for about 15 years or so. But this study, this teaching by Dr. David Jeremiah has really shown me some things in a whole new light. And a couple of my most memorable points are these. After the rapture, anyone who has heard the gospel message and doesn't accept it before the rapture will not be able to accept him in the tribulation. It will be too late. The emerald green rainbow around the throne, which represents eternal promise to us. The fact that all of creation sings in a minor key, which is sad by nature. And in heaven, we will sing together in absolute perfect harmony. Ah. One of the points I like to call our date with God. And everything that God created is for us to look and see how great and perfect and beautiful he is. And to know that he loves us from the smell of a flower or the perfect order of the sun, moon, and stars to the setting of the sun and the beauty and the beauty therein to the crashing of the wave along the shore. They were all created for us so that we would know that he is God and that one day he would come for his bride. And my last point, the ultimate perfection of our new home with streets of such pure gold that it is transparent with its beautiful stones along the path and the radiance of God's glory shining forever, with the opportunity to partake freely of the tree of life. At the end of it all, no matter what hardships we face on this earth, I will stand for Christ because in the end, we win. Escape the coming night. After studying this book of Revelation, I have a better understanding of the book of Revelation. One, the book of Revelation is of Jesus Christ, 1, 1 to 20. It tells us of the messages of the seven churches. One church we don't want to be like is Sardis, the dead church. John's view into heaven, uh, four, the tribulations, five, the millennium, six, then Satan's last stand, Seven, the great white throne, the judgment. Eight, then the new heaven and the new earth. I want to see Christ and be by his side. We bring him. My greatest experience was for the very first time in my life, I got to read the entire book of Revelation aloud. And I am so thankful for that. We've all been through stuff over this past year. But we have held together as a group. I thank you all for your diligence coming out. I'm thinking of winter time and it's cold and it's wet and we're still here. And I'm thankful and so grateful and when we worship on Sundays, I can hear the praise. It's a, it's a different sound. It's coming from this group. And I pray that you continue to receive God's blessings from reading his word, reading the book of Revelation. And now that you are filled with his spirit to share the book of Revelation. And like I said last night, I'm so grateful for Swim TV that we're able to do that. That we're not just sitting on this word, we can actually share it. And I pray that Pastor is pleased with what we've done tonight and that she can use it going forward. So I just thank you, each and every one of you, and for those that couldn't even be here tonight. Uh, we think of Sister Julie, and we pray for her. Um, and... Just know, the enemy is not happy with what has happened this past year. And Mother Russell, yes. Um, you know, I'm thinking of Mother Russell, Father Russell. I'm thinking of Mother Brangman. Um, I'm thinking of Sister Julie. 
But they still praise God anyway. Like I said to Pastor, Mother Russell is still doing her work. Even in the state that she is in, she is still doing her work. So be encouraged, people. We're not going to go out. We're an army, and now we've got to go out and let people know what we know. Thank you. God bless you. Well, the book of Revelation. Uh, I am a student of investigation by nature. And hence, I want to figure things out. And just a few things that I want to mention to you that really hits me um, in my heart, in my spirit, and caused me to want to stand all the more. Here's one thought, that after Revelation chapter 4, the church is no longer in the earth realm. We have been raptured out. And so after Revelation chapter 4, we don't experience Revelation chapter 5, 6, 7, etc. And so the church, God harvests the church, the body of Christ unto himself and spares us. Why? Because in this world, we actually submitted ourselves to persecution and whatnot. So we've been through it. After Revelation chapter four, the church is gone. Here's the other point. The Holy Spirit has also left the earth realm. Now, why is this vital? Well, it's vital because when Jesus ascended into heaven after the crucifixion and the resurrection, when he ascended, he said, I'm going to leave you the Holy Spirit. Now, why is this important? The Holy Spirit is important because he is the Spirit of God that woos you in. You know, he touches your heart so that you feel convicted and want to convert your life and become a Christian. Now, after chapter 4 of Revelation, the Holy Spirit is no longer needed because the church is not here. So as many of those who remain after the rapture in Bermuda want to run down to Shekinah Worship Center and accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, there will be no wooing. So even if you do the act, the intercessor of the act is no longer there, or here, I should say, and so there will be no, no conversion stories of Gentiles after the rapture. There will be none at all. And so you have to choose Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior while you have breath, while you have life, and while the rapture has not yet occurred, except him today. Here's another point that I found sobering and certainly helped me a bit. I always had the struggle. My God, if my children don't make it into heaven, if my siblings, my brother, my sister, if they don't make it into heaven, how can I be happy? I'm, I'm going to be devastated. I don't know how I will receive this. How can I have this joy unspeakable? How can I enjoy heaven when the very ones that are closest to my heart have not made it in? Well, during this study of the book of Revelation, we learned that there may be one time you will cry in heaven, certainly at the thought of losing those loved ones to hell. But then God shall wipe every tear out of your eyes. In other words, there will be no more tears after that last cry. There will be no more tears, which tells me that certain earthly memories will no longer play to your emotions on matter. Interesting point to note there as I thought on it, that while in heaven we shall remember them no more, so we won't be tormented or hurt, the very opposite is happening in heaven. That those that refuse to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, they will be tormented with memories. They will remember every sermon that they heard, every opportunity that was given them to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. It will be a part of the weeping and the gnashing of teeth. My God, my God, I don't even want to know about it. And so that was one of the rescue statements that I won't have to be remembering, you know, what's happening if soon so go, I won't be asking God, can you spare him? Can you go down? Mm -mm. That will not be a part of my current memory line. And so again, I beg of you, uh, mother, father, 
And those of you that are Christians, don't stop asking them, your loved ones, to come into the kingdom for such a time as this. And these revelation classes, what they basically did also was remind me as a pastor that I want to make sure that Shekinah Worship Center is the church at Philadelphia, the church that loves God with agape love. Not some of these other churches, you know, you love them today, you don't love them tomorrow. That's the lukewarm, hot, cold, you know. God would have nothing to do with the lukewarm church. And so I have to keep an eye out on Shekinah that we don't lose our passion for the word of God, for Jesus Christ. I have to make sure that even individual members within Shekinah Worship Center are not exhibiting the other six churches that received rebuke and stern warning. Please be very mindful that God in Revelation, this book in revealing the revelation of Jesus Christ, he is not condemning the sinner. The sinner is already condemned. He is speaking to the churches that have the responsibility to sanctify themselves and keep themselves holy and have fallen away. That's why in the last days there will be a great falling away because it is a manifestation or a carrying out of the book of Revelation because Jesus said it would happen. And so these are just a few of the nuggets <laughs> that I received during this magnificent teaching. And of course, you've heard it in some of uh, the, the sharing of other class members. What a wonderful feeling to understand that we win. That no matter what seems like a loss in this earthly realm, no matter what seems like it has come against us here on the earth, that in eternity, after earth, my God, when the mortal, come on, you hear it at funerals, when mortal shall become immortality, that time is for those who have chosen Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. So I want to encourage you even at the end of sharing these testimonials. If you want to win, win for eternity's sake, win in eternity. If you want to win, Accept Jesus Christ now as your Lord and Savior. If you are in a church and they're not preaching the entirety of the Word of God with this severe warning at the book of Revelation, and God said that he or she that reads this book is blessed, and the Word says he or she that has an ear, let them hear what the Spirit is saying while the Spirit is here. If you're a part of a church and you're not hearing that, you are not being prepared for eternity. Anybody can prepare. You can have uh, empowerment speakers to prepare you for earth. I want to prepare God's people for eternity. So please be welcomed at Shekinah Worship Center. Those that have lost faith in the church, those that have become despondent, well, become respondent again. Don't give up on God because God hasn't given up on you. Come and bring your gifts to the house of God so that you may hear, well done. Well done, meaning I have handled my talents, my giftings well, and God is pleased. So again, you are welcome. Come on by Shekinah Worship Center. Certainly reach out to me. You can email me at any time. My email is right there on the, the bottom of the screen right now, swim at logic.bm. That comes directly to me, and I'm obliged, and it's my pleasure to respond to you. I take what I do seriously, and I understand I will be accountable to God, not accountable to men or to government, but to God. That's more important. So listen, join us January 2020 for the next session, the next cohort of those who will learn about the book of Revelation. You will be blessed. Blessings abound.